Hi everyone, it's Brooks from Collectible Brooks, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about a favorite amongst collectors, the blue and white ginger jar. Some of you may remember that recently I traveled to Round Top, Texas to the huge antique fair. I brought home two antique ginger jars. The first was this classic double happiness jar that's still available for purchase on my website. The second one was this great um, bird and floral jar that may have made it into my own collection because it happens. But after I got home, I um, began wondering, how do I know these jars are actually antique? There's no date on them. They're not branded. It's just pretty porcelain and some guy's word that they're antique. So I started doing a little bit of research and I found so many wonderful facts about ginger jars that I just wanted to share them with you. So first of all, what is a ginger jar? I think most of us know this term, but for anyone who doesn't, ginger jars are rounded porcelain vessels that were once used to store herbs in China. I've read different origin dates of these. I've read as early as 220 BC, um, which would have been the Qin Dynasty, to like 1368, which would have been the um, Ming period. Either way, they've been made for a really long time. Ginger jars were first made to transport spices such as ginger, salt, etc. When ginger became an export to the West, they became known as ginger jars. So originally intended for utilitarian, for a utilitarian purpose, um, as soon as the West saw them, they became highly collectible and um, were collected solely just for their decorative style. Obviously, ginger jars are made in China and their production actually grew out of a certain region of China called, and I'm probably totally going to mispronounce this, but Xinjiang. Xinjiang um, is the region of China that is known for porcelain manufacturing. Many of today's porcelain comes from there and actually even many of the pieces that I source have been made in factories from Xinjiang. Uh, one time, I actually ordered directly from a factory there and 300 pounds of porcelain from Jinjajong showed up on my front porch. was a little bit overwhelming at the time. But even though many of these pieces and much of this porcelain has historically and still today been made in large scale production, these many of these pieces are still handmade hand-painted, produced by master potters and skilled artisans. Um, and they're still very high quality. So even a reproduction piece um, may still be very high quality. Um, they're just not as valuable because they're of their age. Um, and really the fact that these um, pieces are still being made in China is such a testament to their ancient history, their culture, and their tradition of porcelain making. Something interesting I came across um, during my research is that I read that the English word China is actually probably a, a Western attempt at pronouncing Jin Zhang's original name, which is Shangnan, C-H-A-N-G-N-A-N. -N -N. So kind of interesting. So when you're shopping for a porcelain piece um, there, or a porcelain ginger jar, there's a couple things to keep in mind um, regarding their value. First of all, obviously age. The older the piece, the more valuable it will um, be. And I'll um, speak a little bit more about this in just a bit, um, how you can tell age. Um, also, the colors of the piece, the rarity of the piece, if it still has a lid, those antiques with lids are uh, much more valuable. Um, but also, the quality of the porcelain and the painting. Are, is the painting, the art, very defined, um, detailed, or is it kind of coarse brush strokes? That's not a sign of as valuable of a piece. Um, a little bit about rain marks. Um, rain marks were usually applied to tell you which dynasty and emperor a piece was made um, under, but these can be really rather misleading because sometimes the potter would actually copy previous um, reigns and use their marks for styles to give homage to um, uh, past craftsmen. And so this, it was not to mislead buyers, but definitely has complicated the piece. Um, and then, you know, um, if you want to learn a little bit more about rain marks, I did come across a really good source um, out of an article on Christie's.com um, 
there's a book called Gerald Davidson's The Handbook of Marks on uh, Chinese ceramics. Unfortunately, when I went to Amazon to buy this book, it was over $1,000. So just think of all the blue and white you can buy instead of that book though. Um, so getting back to how old um, the two ginger jars are that I bought in Round Top. From my research, I learned that older ginger jars are usually heavier than the more modern pieces. No one's really sure why this is, but it is speculated that this was possibly to balance a ship's ballast um, during older times. So my jars are pretty heavy. Um, I come across a lot of blue and white porcelain and I can definitely um, actually tell a difference with, um, with their substantial heft. Um, also, I learned to look at a pieces at the foot of the piece. Um, an older piece will have lots of different wear marks and they shouldn't all be going the same direction. Um, this piece does have that and you wanna look for just um, signs of age with different wear directions. And um, as you can see, this has got a lot of different, um, looks like it's been dragged around, moved around a little bit. You also want to look at the lid and I'm going to show you, um, this is the double happiness lid and you can see, I mean, it looks older. It's got some definite wear to it, but this is a new antique style reproduction piece from that piece up there. Um, as you can see, they've used a stain to give it that antique um, style appearance and you can actually even see brush strokes. So antique pieces should not have any brush strokes at all. I'm put those up. Um, and so definitely with those two pieces, the, just the wear and um, just the style of not having extra um, stain applied, uh, brush strokes, those pieces um, look like they're pretty old. So um, even possibly antique. Um, so lastly, I want to close with one of my favorite um, ginger jar patterns. You can actually see it up there. Um, this is called the Three Trees of Winter. I can't bring that big heavy piece down, but I have another piece. This is on a cachet pot from my um, shop, but I really love this pattern. Um, these, this is called the Three um, friends of winter. The, free, the three friends of winter are the pine tree, the bamboo, and the plum tree. Um, they are grouped together in this context because these trees all flourish during this winter season. Um, and you know in Chinese art so much is based on symbolism um, and these trees symbolize the ideal characteristics of the scholar gentleman, which would be steadfastness, perseverance and resilience, basically thriving under adversity, much like you would find these um, trees in winter. Um, this term was found as early as 1241 in literary writings, and they're really a common subject in paintings, calligraphy, all, all kinds of different art forms, and also in today's modern porcelains. So um, just one of my favorite patterns. I think it's really pretty. So um, that's basically all about my ginger jar obsession. And I know many of you probably um, also love ginger jars just as much as I do. I hope you um, learned something today. Thank you guys so much for um, following along and I hope everybody has a great day. Bye.